trying to put together a syllabus here. All the teachers of the world know what that's like. Hi, I'm Jeff Johnson, and I teach English at Central Lakes College. You know, the college, like every school, is doing its best to become better and better at everything that it does all the time. There's no bottom to the list of things that Central Lakes College is trying to do for Central Minnesota students of all ages and all backgrounds. And the College in the Schools program is one that we're continually working on uh, to, imp to improve and make better. And I'm making this little vid uh, as a kind of effort uh, to uh, help improve the syllabi that we get from all the 31 schools that are offering our classes. Um, if you're teaching CIS, if you're a College in the Schools teacher, you know what you're doing. You're experienced. You're a professional. We don't give these classes to chimps. You know that. So the, the last thing I'm up to here is, is uh, some sort of comprehensive look at all the things that should be or should not be on a syllabus. What I'm hopeful to do in just a few minutes here is to loan you a stance towards the college, towards the class, and, and towards the syllabus. I'm not an expert on writing syllabi, but I have for 26 years in a range of educational situations uh, been writing them, and I've made plenty of mistakes, and it gives me maybe a little bit of a tiny ethos uh, uh, to uh, roam about here and um, communicate some things to you. It's been kind of windy on my farm lately. I did have a syllabus blow off my porch. Uh, let's have a walk around, try to find the rest of the pages, and uh, I've got some stories I want to tell you. Follow me. Let's begin by evoking uh, a day that we're all familiar with, right? It's that first day of class. It's the moment that maybe we're nervous about and probably a moment that students are not very fond of generally. We walk in, we brandish and distribute our syllabi and depending upon what the course is, there's the big, long, solemn moment where they read, misread, possibly skim the syllabus. And uh, you ask if there's any questions or concerns, and there's just sort of everybody sitting around nodding, going, okay, w we can live with that. And I'm thinking about all the years I've been doing this. Uh, when I was a young teacher, because I was afraid, the first syllabi I ever wrote were about laying down the law, you know, uh, establishing authority, letting them know that I drive the truck and, and, and they don't. But as the years move on, one moving into the next, uh, the syllabi began to serve uh, different purposes for me. We know that the syllabus should have uh, basic information on it. It should have a course description. We know that a well-written syllabus can establish a mood, a tone. If we're really serious about crafting a good syllabus, we know that they can actually stir some excitement and some passion for the subject matter that, that, that's coming their way. But uh, I want to tell you a story uh, about a period in my life writing syllabi where an authority figure came along and said, you know what, thou shalt do this and this and this. And that was the American College Board. Now I was a kind of agent for the American College Board for 19 years at St. John's Preparatory School where I taught AP English and I absolutely loved teaching the class. The, the deal was like this. The students took AP English from me at the end of the year, if they did well enough in the AP English exam, they might earn uh, college credit wherever they were going off to school. And uh, they also double dipped, so to speak, not unlike uh, what happens with PSEO and uh, uh, college in the schools. They were taking AP English and earning high school credit for it, and then at St. John's University they were simultaneously enrolled for a mysterious little class called Writing About Literature. I remember very clearly one of my formative experiences as a teacher came when the American College Board looked up and decided that in this country it was pretty much like the Wild West in terms of the syllabi that people were creating. And the American College Board issued an edict. They said, okay, your syllabus needs to have this, this, and this, and it can't have this, this, and this. They said, if you don't comply with this and create a syllabus that assents to this, you can't call it that class anymore. You can order the test, but you cannot call it AP English. And I remember clearly being young and thus having an ego and being kind of flippant about it. And I just sent them the syllabus that I'd been using for years. And about a month later, I got that syllabus back in holy repudiation. You know, I looked into that screen and I saw enumerated every poverty on that syllabus. 
for a while, I think, I thought, do I need a lawyer? Do I need an attorney? I felt like I was in some kind of trouble. I also remember being frustrated. I was thinking, what gives American College Board, you know, what, what gives you the right uh, you know, to uh, tamper my uh, creativity, my academic freedom? And for a while I was thinking, well, the heck with it. I'll just call it something else. I'll call it college English, whatever. But I love the course. I love the sound of it. And a couple things happened. Thing one was I went through the list of the learning outcomes that the American College Board wanted for that class and I interrogated them. And one by one, I, I said, you know what? That makes sense. That, that's thoughtful. That makes sense. I can, I can do that. I remember too recalling that every single fall that I was at that high school, I got phone calls from students maybe the year before or even a couple years before that. They would call me on the phone or they would send me an email and the message was the same thing every time. Johnson, I need the syllabus. I need the syllabus to give to the registrar to make sure that I can get credit for the course uh, that, that I took with you, AP English. And they had reasonable questions. Who are the credentials of this guy? What was the reading list? What kind of papers were written? And every time I made sure that that syllabus was quickly sent to the students so they could go to the registrar and get the transfer credit, so to speak, um, for that course. And it made sense to me then to write a syllabus uh, that complied. I remember about a week before it was due, I wrote a 4,400 word syllabus, sent it to the gods of the American College Board, along with a little burnt offering that I sent them in, uh, via UPS. And uh, the syllabus uh, was approved and I more or less lived happily ever after. That's not too different from what we're worried about in the CIS program. We need these credits to transfer, okay? And um, I, think, I think you can get that. Last page. We've arrived at the point in this little vid where I want to loan you that stance I was talking about a few minutes ago. Maybe a, an appropriate intellectual stance towards the college and, and towards the syllabus. And I'll try to put this in a way that doesn't get anybody upset. Um, and, and it has to do with this. In the same way that I once had to craft a syllabus that assented to some hopes that the American College Board had for all the uh, AP English classes of, of, of America, so too does Central Lakes College have a hope or two, or upgrade that a little bit, an expectation or two about your syllabus. Here's the most important thing, I think, to remember. The syllabus is yours, okay? You own it. When you write a syllabus, it's your um, creative product. It came from your imagination, and it is your intellectual property. It's yours, not unlike this video. Um, but at the same time, please be aware that the course outcomes, you know what, they belong to Central Lakes College. And depending upon what you're teaching, your syllabus is going to have to reflect those course outcomes. And that's going to vary from class to class to class. T to be uh, candid, there's, there's things that simply have to be on there. Your name has to be on the syllabus, right? The name of whatever class you're teaching has to be on there. I would love to call my uh, composition classes at, at Central Lakes the rhetoric of writing, but the class is Comp 1. So that's how I talked about it all morning at, at Central Lakes as I was teaching it. You have to have a list of books on there, right? The ones that you're going to be offering for the class. Uh, it, it is uh, not optional to put the American Disabilities Act thing on there. That's got to be on there because we are an ADA compliant school and, 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 and so is yours and so is, is your syllabus. Now once we go up this road uh, from discipline to discipline, things are, are going to change, right? Uh, an English syllabus probably is going to say, you know what, we're going to produce some writing. A geometry syllabus probably uh, is going to talk about the importance of proofs. Since I have a secret history major, I know that most history classes are going to be talking about historical method. Your syllabus, at the end of the proverbial day, does not have to be an artifact of genius. But it can't suck. And it won't, as long as the, you, you as a CIS instructor uh, work with your CIS collaborator to make sure that um, your syllabus re reflects the outcomes. There's really no other way to put it. Well, I've got my syllabus put back together, and the sun has come out to illuminate a couple of rationales that I'd like to provide uh, for you, maybe to motivate you to really dream into being the best possible syllabus that you can. 
the first of these has to do with an agency that Central Lakes College is going to be visited by soon. And before I talk about it, I'd like to editorialize a little bit. Around CLC, you can't swing a cat without hitting an acronym. In fact, I envision a distant day where we speak and think and possibly teach entirely in acronyms. I'm going to unload one on you here, so you better brace yourself. I'm talking about uh, an organization called NACEP. That's the National Alliance for Concurrent Enrollment Partnerships. Rather than stand here and talk about how uh, clunky uh, that strikes me, I'd like to tell you that this is a very important and very authoritative accreditation society that's going to come in eventually and take a look at CLC, CLC syllabi. I'd like to read uh, directly uh, from their website so you know exactly what they are. NACEP works to ensure that college courses taught by high school teachers are as rigorous as courses offered on the sponsoring college campus. As the sole accrediting body for concurrent enrollment partnerships, NACEP helps these programs adhere to the highest standards so students experience a seamless transition to college and teachers benefit from meaningful, ongoing professional development. Concurrent enrollment means that you know, they're enrolled in two different places at the same time, high school and college. What this means, uh, in shorthand, is eventually NACEP is going to visit Central Lakes College. They're going to pull up in a great big stretch limousine. They're going to be wearing dark, dangerous looking Ray-Ban sunglasses. And they will be bearing black attache cases, which contain large magnifying glasses. And what they're going to do is camp in a conference room for a lot of hours. And they are going to read every CIS syllabus that you teachers create for us. Uh, they're going to be looking and making sure that there are points of intersection between the course outcomes that are owned by Central Lakes College and the uh, outcomes that, that you put on your syllabus. It's really important that we're prepared for that day um, and that we have the very best syllabi uh, to, to present to them. It's all about integrity. You know, looming above and beyond uh, being ready for NACEP's visit, um, I, I'd just like to say the obvious. You know, we're educators and we are all about serving students. And in my mind, what's first and foremost in the serving of a CIS student is to make sure that these credits are going to move forward. Now, I'm a dreamer, like lots of English majors. I want my classes to be exciting, transformative places to be. I don't just want a class, I want an event. And I tell my students all the time, I don't just want to offer you a course that in informs the mind, but maybe instructs and, and teaches the human heart. Say you do that in the way I've described but you don't have a syllabus that proves it. It's like it never happened. And I can think of another thing that's gonna, not going to happen. Uh, if you lack that syllabus, you know, those credits are simply not going to go onto that transcript. So work with your CIS collaborator. And um, hopefully, and I know, hopefully you have the same kind of collegial relationship that I do with the teacher I'm working with uh, up at Greenway High School, way up in Coleraine, Minnesota. I observed a first-rate class hosted by an utter professional. And how happy I was to sit and listen to her rousing discussion that she led on F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. I wish you luck uh, in all your endeavors. I can't tell you how excited I am to be part of the CIS program, though I'm new to it. I hope you feel the same. I, I hope, too, maybe that someday I get to visit your high school and uh, walk its corridors and see how things are going. Good luck. So long. <laughs>